Hello. Welcome to CoreLog Agent for ZOS, a live demo with HP ArcSight ESM. I'm Charles Mills. I'm the Director of Advanced Projects for CoreLog. As such, I'm responsible for the CoreLog Agent for ZOS. Here's what we're going to be looking at today. We've got the CoreLog agent running as a started task on two LPARs. One is a ZOS V1R13 and one is ZOS V1R2. We're going to be using the V1R13 system for the most part for the demo. It's talking over the internet directly to HP ArcSight. There's no uh, intermediate formatting PC or anything in the middle here. Both LPARs are talking directly to ArcSight. The LPARs are in use, so we're going to see some events just coming in uh, kind of randomly and uh, some events that I will specifically create for the demo. Here's the events we're going to see. We're going to start with some RACF and ACF2 events. Let's try some invalid logons. Let's try a good user ID and a bad password. Okay, so that should generate a couple of events. And also, let's try accessing a data set that I'm not authorized to access. Okay, trying to access production proc lot there that I'm not authorized to access. So let's get out of there and let's take a look at what we've got here in ArcSight. There you can see some of the events. There's an undefined user ID. There's the undefined user ID and the various uh, things there we tried to do. Here is the invalid password event. Here is the resource access insufficient authority event. And you can see a bunch of stuff there. You can see that I was trying to read, that it was a data set. And here is the name of the data set I was trying to access. So you can see all those fields very nicely populated into ArcSight. I don't have a running ACF2, but I do have some ACF2 events here uh, that have been previously loaded through the agent into, uh, into ArcSight. So you can see we also process uh, ACF2 events. You can see a logon ID modification. Uh, you can see when it occurred. You can see the user ID. You can see the username and so forth. And uh, you can see what was changed there. So we do have full support for ACF2 in ArcSight. Okay. So we saw the resource, the ACF2 and RACF events. Now let's take a look at some DB2 events. I'm going to show uh, administrative access, creation and deletion of system level objects, and invalid logical access attempts. I'm going to submit a couple of jobs here. Let's try, um, let's just do a, a command that will kind of demonstrate uh, Show a console command, and that will show administrative access. And then I'm going to run a couple of jobs. That 
will demonstrate um, various DB2 type events. Okay, let's take a look at those in ArcSight. Now there is the command. There I am doing a, a display trace. And um, you can see my user ID. There's the display trace from today. There you can see uh, the console command. You can see my user ID. And, and you can see the, the database and so forth. Now you can see here us running utilities. You can see um, utility object changes. You can see uh, various administrative accesses here from batch. You can see uh, creates, alters, and drops on various tables. You can see here authorization failures. You can see us trying to go in with a user ID that we're not allowed to do. You can see the entire command and so forth. If we select this, of course, we can we can drill down normal uh, ArcSight type facilities there and see the entire SQL statement. We can see there a write for an audited table. So those are some uh, examples of what we can see for db uh, 2 in ArcSight with the Coralog agent for ZOS. So we saw these various db 2 events. Let's take a look at some file integrity events. Let's take a look at editing a Parm Live member. And this is a member member of a uh, of a Parm Lab. And if we look at file integrity events here, there we see the add or replace. We see the the user ID. We could see the uh, SNA terminal I was on. And if we come over here, here we can see the uh, data set I was trying to uh, alter, and we can see the member there. We see also a whole lot of other activities I was doing here. Let's uh, clear that out of there. And you see a number of accesses also here of sequential and VCM data sets here. You see various users modifying various sequential and VCM data sets. So there we've seen the editing of a Parm Live member, and we've seen accesses to sequential and VCM files. Finally, let's take a look at some TCP IP and FTP events. I'm going to take and run an FTP job here. generates both some successes and some failures. And let's come over here and look at these TCP IP events. And there we see an FTP server completion. You can see the raw event 
you can see various things like the user ID, the file type you can see was a JES data set, and uh, for each of these FTP events you can see you can see the file in question. We see server completions, we see client completions, and we also see server logon failures. We see a user ID of bad guy, obviously no good, and we can see the uh, logon failure. Let me show you the TN3270 session events. Let's take a look at some of those. We should be able to see some of those in here. Now there we can see the, the connection uh, of an SNA, of a remote user to an SNA device. And in the raw event, we can see various detail for that. So I'm going to terminate this here. We've seen the TCP IP and FTP events. We've seen, seen TN3270 session initiation, FTP client and server successes and failures. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please direct them to your sales representative, and he can direct them to me. Thank you very much.